head off. So this could be an entire system to tighten their belt up. Uh, anybody that's not made a comment like to make a comment. Mr. Kenyon, please repeat your motion. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I can read it back to I Kelly. Let Kelly read it back. Okay, Kelly. Mr. Kenyon, in your uh, the uh, raise in fee, I'm assuming you were mentioned wanting in January 21. If that was the recommendation of the administration, January 21. Okay. Okay. Uh, Do we also need a a recommend? A part of that is a recommendation to raise the fees in nutrition. Mm, no. No. Yeah, we've, we've well, already done that. Yeah, we. That's that's a whole different ball of wax. I, I know. Now I think I think Miss White's going to explain something to us. I was getting ready to ask. Okay, so just for child nutrition, um, all children eat free this year. So that's part of that's a huge benefit to the program. They're operating under the summer feeding program. So their reimbursement rate is actually higher than it would be in a typical year. So that is helping their losses not to look as bad um, because of that higher reimbursement rate. So there's really no need to increase the fee right now. And Tina can correct me if I'm wrong about that. That is correct for this school year. I will bring price increases to the board's attention. I used to do that in April and May. Okay. Um, so that's part of the following year. Does the 300000 from fund balance, is that any issue as far as your accounting? Uh, so everything is fluid right now, correct? Yeah. So um, athletics will be another thing that's unbudgeted um, that we'll have to do a budget amendment. For budget amendment, athletics. okay. Um, so if everything kind of holds the same, then I think we can can make okay. that work. Very good. Sir. Just want to check on that so, issue. Yep. So I've got a little bit of a question. So Mr. Kennington, I'm confused a little bit. So we're talking about giving three hundred thousand dollars to these people that we're going to offer a furlough to, but if we offer them another job and they don't take it, then what are we going to do with that money? Leave Go back to fund balance. balance. Back to fund it'll stay in fund balance. But, okay, so it's almost a duplicity of what we're talking about right now already because we've said that there are available positions. They, right. they already said there's at least that number of positions available, but yet we have uh, employees that don't want to do that work. So I think it's sort of a moot point. I don't think we're really I – don't, I don't think that – that, that motion is even necessary because you're saying we do have uh, the, at least that many positions that these people could be uh, placed. And technically, we could offer them that additional position. They could serve in that role, and then if the forecast gets brighter, then we can right. work out a plan to yes, transition so them back think, to school I nutrition. Well, I think we've got a motion in a second, and the question is now being called, and everybody's spoken. Uh, so. Uh, Mr. Kenyon's motion that's on the table, uh, do we want it read again or is everybody good? We got it. Mm -hmm. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Uh, let's have a hand vote on that, please. All in favor, aye. Uh, against. Very good. Thank you. Motion passes. 5-2. Five 5-2. Two. Five two. Correct. Very good. Uh, is there any other discussion on, on that issue? Uh, I think we've kicked the can down the road again, but uh, it's probably what we need to do at this point. Uh, let's move to school improvement plan. Mr. Ribbick, Ms. Cooper, y'all spoke to us about this last uh, week. Everybody's had time to review the school improvement plans. Any questions of these, uh, of Mr. Ribbick or Ms. Cooper? If not, the chair would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second, Mr. Chair. I have a motion second to approve the uh, school improvement plans. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Thank you. Now, Dr. Lassane and Ms. White, you see how easy that could be? <laughs> I don't think there's there any humor here, but anyway. Uh, Ms. Cooper, you've got a first reading of a high school exams policy. Yes. Can you pull that one up, Jada? Only one, only one change. 
Yeah. Um, this one basically is to update our policy because North Carolina has done away with the North Carolina final exams. And so we've, um, if you look at bullet point number five, it basically has North Carolina end of course tests and CTE exams and it scratches the North Carolina final exams. Um, because like I said, North Carolina has done away with those exams. Um, then under number eight, changing first and second term to semester and then where it has absences, um, making it first or second semester, and then no first or second semester senior may be exempt from examination um, if it's a state required exam. So this would, um, it just updates our policies to take out the NCFEs. And this will be our first reading. Any, any questions? Any questions? Yep, we'll vote on this next month. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, you very much. Now we have second readings from Mr. Armstrong on a whole bunch of policies. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, have you had any comments, questions, or concerns brought to you over the last month on these policies? No, sir. Board members, any questions since the last time we reviewed these policies? If not, I, the chair would entertain a motion to uh, pass all 10 of these policies. So moved. Second, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion in two seconds to pass these 10 policies. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, security personnel and ESS discussion. Mr. Poindexter, I believe you're going to take the lead on this. Yeah, we, we, uh, we, we got a presentation from ESS and uh, their staffing company that provides services to many, many schools across the country. Uh, and um, their proposal included projections of some pretty uh, significant savings, uh, hard and soft. And um, uh, one of the areas that um, I think we concluded that we would like to move forward with was, was with security personnel. And so um, I think our objective here tonight is to, is to move forward to look at, you know, engaging them uh, what it would take, what it's going to cost to engage them to now manage our security personnel. Now, ESS manages uh, uh, personnel across several different areas. We felt that this was an, uh, a good place for us to start with this company and, again, save the school system uh, some money. So this would just be for uh, this at this time for security personnel. That's correct. Board members' questions? Uh, I just was uh, curious because I was also at that. Did uh, Dr. Lusane, did we ever get to reach out to any of those other districts and ask them what kind of satisfaction they have with that company? I have talked to a couple of districts, but I have a few more that I'm waiting on to, to get back. But the um, districts that I have spoken with is favorable. Okay. Uh, I do not see this as a voting item. Uh, Dr. James, are you just looking for... Uh, the go ahead to deal with them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any board members, any objections? What security personnel are we talking about, please? Well, the uh, guard, guard shack personnel, I think, are, at, of course, again, depending on what we're going to do with COVID 19. But as we bring kids back, I know that the principals would like to have those individuals back in the guard shacks. And, of course, if we start sports back, after you all look at the budget tonight, um, we are doing volleyball and, and cross country, which is very minimal. But we'll also need security personnel there. We do use the sheriff's office, but it's a blend of the two because of the cost involved. And I think uh, with this program, uh, we would pay ESS right at $16 and some change, and we would pay the employee that they hire $13, and it would be our employee. So they do make a markup, but they take on the liability, the insurance, the, all that is on their plate. Uh, I just got, oh, there's one question is, uh, uh, this company that you, that you guys went to, now, uh, they do work for the principal. Yes. Is that right? Yes. They, they are responsible to that individual. They're the hiring agent, and that's basically their part. They pay the they pay a weekly check. They take the liability, but if there is an issue with that individual, one it's not like us. Uh, if if there's an issue, that individual it's a right to work state in their in their mirror or the purview, so that individual won't be back on your campus. Thank you. 
without any negative uh, questions or comments from board members, I'm assuming we're all saying it's good to go ahead. Yes, we gotta have it. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, short athletic discussion, Mr. Howe. <laughs> well, let me just start off by saying uh, last Monday night, uh, Mr. Kelly made a statement, and it was profound to me because it made me pause to think. And he's done that to me several times since this spring with different things. And it's good. I, um, his statement was, we're talking about cutting, but yet we're talking about giving money for athletics. And, uh, you know, he, he had a tough time balancing the two, and I completely understand. Now, my pause to thought was even though I've been – I was a coach for 30 years, and I know the value of athletics. It, it is part of high school life. It is something that we took away, and I say we, whoever, took away from our class of 2020. They didn't have those things in the spring. They didn't have their proms, and they didn't have their graduation. And they can never get it back. Uh, athletics, the benefit of even if you are not a participant, going to games and the socializing with your fellow classmates is there's no comparison of how good uh, and wholesome that is for a student. And then I look at the over 2,000 employees we have, and I say, why are we here? We are here for those children. And if it wasn't for those children, none of you would have a job. So I have to say maybe those children are more important than some of these other people. Now, I am so disappointed with the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Uh, we did start official practice November the 4th for cross country and volleyball. Uh, swimming and diving starts the 23rd of November. Basketball starts December the 7th. Lacrosse, January the 11th. Soccer, January the 11th. Football, February 8th. Now, over since I retired in 2004, if you look at the North Carolina High School Athletic Association manual, you will notice that it's quite different than it was when I was an athletic director. There aren't any rules anymore. They leave it up to the local school system. They have, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Armstrong, they have $40 million they're sitting on in the endowment fund. Is that right? Yeah, I didn't get a chance to research, but I'm pretty sure you're correct. It's about $40 million. Now, some of the principals says it's time to let us have some of that money back because we're the ones that sent it to you. You know what they said? Well, that's for a rainy day. And I can't think of a, a rainy day more than what we have right now, other than if it was Armageddon. I don't know, but... Uh, a hurricane. It, it is. This is serious stuff. So if we're going to have try to have these sports for our children, then uh, we're going to have to come across with some money because you cannot say to a high school, you're going to put these sports on, and where are you going to get the money to pay your officials? Where are you going to get the money to pay your security without us as board members saying we have to compensate them some way? Or 
make the tough decision and say we aren't going to have sports. Gosh, I will vote against that, but I am just one-seventh. If I were a high school principal, next time y'all have a meeting, I would say to the rest of the principals in the room, it's time to vote this group out, meaning the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, because you have that right under the bylaws of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, you can say, thank you very much. We're going to start our own organization, one that is responsible to us rather than we being responsible to you. We had that one time. Which is, which is exactly, which is exactly what they have become. It's all about us, the schools, giving them money. And uh, it's just totally out of control, in my opinion. But I'm not a principal. That's something you're going to have to do. And you start a new organization, you can say, okay, private schools, you're not coming in. And it's just public schools because they cheat. And every coach in North Carolina knows it. So... That is one good thing that could come out of it. Now, it's going to be up to this board, and I, I feel sorry. Have you ever kicked a ball when it's cold? You realize how hard those balls get? Now, if I'm up in the mountains, I may have to paint my soccer ball black to, to kick it in the snow. So I don't think there was a lot of thought when we came up with this schedule. And my whole thing of giving you this scenario was I would like for this board to be the first board in North Carolina to send a letter to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association telling them we are displeased with their schedule. Now, don't want me to write it because I'm too passionate. I'd, I'd let one of our lawyers write it. That way I won't say something bad. So... Huh? You want a motion? I'll second. Okay. I would, I would really like for, for uh, that to happen, but I would like to hear from anyone else that wants to say something. Thank you. What? Yes. <laughs> let me... Let me um, make a comment about this. This is a, another idea too. Athletics has, they've been the elephant, to me, they've been the elephant in the room ever since COVID started. Are we going to go back to school full time? Are we going to bring our middle schools back? Are we going to bring our high schools back? Immediately behind that, the question, the next question is, are we going to have athletics and when? Uh, now, two months ago, when they said, somebody said, it was mentioned, that we're going to try to do athletics, but our big money makers are not going to be present, so we're going to have to subsidize athletics. And that's when I made the statement, I can't go along with subsidizing athletics fully when I've got third graders that can't read. That being said, I, yet, I have yet to find out exactly what that's going to cost or what it would cost. The same thing happened again in my estimation. We had a paragraph last month, two months ago, the figure that was floated around was half a million dollars. Scares me to death especially in reference to what we've been talking about tonight. Now, tonight, there's no figure. And if I'm not mistaken, this is November. And we're talking about starting some of these things in, well, they've already started them, haven't they? Practice. Practices have already started. So somebody has said, we're going to practice, I guess, whether we play or not. And if we play, where are you going to get the money to do the things you have to do in order to conduct that sport. Now, I'm like Mr. Howe. I think practically everybody here 
has either been on the field or they've coached an athletic team, and they know the value of that. There is a great value in our athletics in the high schools and middle schools. Would not want to take that out, but I have no figure as to what that would be. I don't have any running total as to what it costs to run a football game or a basketball game or are there any funds coming in? What is it going to be? Uh, that question is still unanswered to me. The question is whether or not we're going to have it. We're practicing, so it looks like we're going to, but I haven't answered yet how we're going to pay for that. Well, let me let me be fair here. This was not on the agenda, so there was no documentation for this. This was put on the agenda at the start of our meeting. No, this is this my discussion. I understand that, but no one knew we were going to have this uh, discussion, so you didn't get any more documentation. No, I, no Mr. I, I Kelly, didn't expect, I didn't expect a whole lot That's what I was more. Saying. I'm just saying that I do not have it. Right. Well, nobody. We don't have. It was provided nobody at the county. It. Yeah, it's it's uh, what we had last time, but. Yeah. Well, we didn't have anything last time. Yes, we did. Right. Did. It's on the screen oh, uh, right, right here. here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, here. We had it on paper last right. time. But we, we, you know, this discussion was not on our agenda is what I'm saying. So we, we don't have any updates. Uh, I believe what the board had pretty much done in, was that, generally speaking, we don't really get involved in athletics. That's right. Uh, that's not really anything we do and I, I'm going to be honest with you we have two state agencies that that have t well the North Carolina High School Athletic Association and then DPI for, for uh, middle schools uh, we've typically just uh, and I agree with you I'm not a big fan of these organizations uh, and, and how they ran and the amount of money they got in the bank uh, but uh, we've typically just followed what the rules are from them, and uh, I think we've just continued to operate this year with, with, with their rules. I, I do think if we're going to, I'm just scared. I, do, I don't particularly see us getting involved uh, very much with athletics because that's just a no win for the board. We have, we have organizations that tell us that. If they're not, if we don't want to be a member of them organizations, then we certainly can pull out, but we'll have nobody to play in North Carolina. I agree with you. I'd love to see the superintendent's organization uh, reorganize the, the North Carolina School Board, School uh, High School Athletic Association. That's a, for a different day. Uh, other comments and questions. Uh, we don't have a motion yet, so anyway, let's go with any other discussion. I, I, I've said it for months here, and I'll say it again that. I would really like to see us get back in the high schools uh, to some degree. Uh, and here we are talking about, hey, we're going to be able to have a cross-country meet, but we can't get people back to schools on, on a consistent basis. And that, to me, is troubling because the priority is, is the education component. Uh, that being said, there is, like y'all have said, great value in, in us doing the athletics. And... Anything that we can do to show people, hey, we, we got 100 people together for a cross-country meet and everybody made it through it and worked out uh, is a good thing, is a good thing. Uh, I would really like to see a, a mix of sticks and carrots here where that we... I, I, Ms. Cooper, did you tell me last week that we were coming back in January at some point for everybody? Can I get you to say that one more time just so I could hear it? <laughs> Elections over. Tell her to say it. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Ivy. High schools are working on cohorts. So Lake Norman and um, South will be working on cohorts yeah. to bring even the if, students back. And Mr. Ivy, I know you probably get tired of hearing me say this, but even if it's 20 percent, 15 percent, come on, let's do something, please, please, on a consistent basis. I, we've got to be able to make that work. I mean, we're talking about. Mr. Kelly's talking about how much money. I mean, you're talking, and Mr. Page is saying, hey, we shouldn't get into this, but there's, there's, there's a lot of money right there. I mean, that's $862,000 uh, just at high school level. Um, and that's a lot of money that's not going toward the education of, of children. And uh, 
What, what, do we no, what do we normally lose a year in athletic funds, Ms. White? How much does athletics usually cost us every year? So the board typically only pays for athletic supplements, and it's about $500,000 that you pay in coaching supplements. The rest of the athletic programs are funded by the schools with gate proceeds, booster donations. All their, all their security and everything. So we pay for middle school security. Um, the high schools pay for their security. That's 500000 on a year when people can come and watch the games, right? For the supplements? Yeah. I mean, for the, yeah, the, the coaching I mean, that's supplements. That's just what we spend on. When, when we can't let but 25 people in, you know, it's going to be – we're going to take a whole lot bigger loss this year, is my prediction. Right. So behind you is what it has cost in eighteen nineteen by school. I think the schedule is probably half of what it is in a typical year. So maybe it would be about half that cost. Um, but we had gathered all that data and presented it at the committee, the whole meeting. Right. And it is hard to know for sure how much gates you'll have. We are, will try to work with the schools to have them only spend absolutely necessary expenditures to have games, knowing that there are – the board will have to supplement the program. We do have three high schools represented tonight here. So this is what it cost us in 19? In a good year. Uh, that's from the school's information. That's what it cost the school's Schools did. athletics. Okay. Right. The board has only historically paid for sup coaching supplements and a little bit of middle school expenses for security. We also buy activity buses. Yes, you also buy we activity buses. Oh, and we... Um, we charge them 175 which just pays for the fuel mainly. So we do do some just other things, yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, I don't disagree with what Mr. Howell said, nor what uh, certainly Mr. Carver just said. I mentioned at the uh, CAL meeting last week uh, and board meeting last month, my concern about South Iredell High School and Lake Norman High School, and we need to have kids there two days a week at least. They need to mirror exactly what the uh, middle school and other high schools are mirroring as far as the kids there. Here again, we have to wait and see what the governor says. Uh, it's going to be a long time between now and, and January the 15th. Yes, I heard Ms. Cooper say that she has been working with Lake Norman High School and South Iredell High School. And I heard Ms. Cooper say, and please, Ms. Cooper, correct me if I'm wrong, that those two high schools will be having schedules very similar to what the other high schools are having presently. So with that being said, I go to athletics and I talk about uh, I love athletics. I want the kids to participate in athletics. But fellas, just think, we've are, we're already in athletics. Are you going to turn? Are you going to cut it cut it off tonight? If you are, you better cut it off tonight. You better not go any further than the practice for volleyball and uh, cross country. Uh, you know, so we basically, by not talking about athletics a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. We just pushed it down the road and practice has started and athletics has started. So now we're at the point, what are we going to do? Are we going to cut it off? Are we going to help supplement it or what? And I think we need to have, you know, some direction from the administration, you know, on this. Uh, you know, I would hate for us to, well, I don't know. Uh, all I know is athletics has started uh, and if we practice athletics has started and if we are not going to fund it we better do that motion tonight mm -mm. now to go to mr howell's motion or his some of his concerns i would be very much in favor of writing a letter to the north carolina high school athletic association asking them because of COVID-19 and what's been happening over the last eight months and what's projected by some to last another 12 months, that they take their $40 million and they divide it up among the 116 public school systems in North Carolina and help fund athletics for this year. I, I could support that. Uh, I don't know, Ms. Howell, if I could support, you know, uh, starting a, a, a new association at this point in time, but I think the way you left it was 
uh, a very good way to leave it, and that was that the principals need to begin the discussion, you know, with their fellow principals within their conference and outside of their conference, because my understanding is that the principals do control the organization. And uh, the ones that are here tonight, uh, I, I, I can't say where they, where they are, uh, of the Mr. Ivy, I see his head. Uh, <laughs> uh, I see Miss Gaither from West Idle High School at the back. Back in the back, okay. I see one from North Idle High School over in the corner, Mr. Herman. Okay. And I think those three high schools will represent anybody else from Lake Norman or Senior High. And I think the other thing is that they have to look at the funds that they have in their individual schools, and they have to exhaust those funds. Uh, they can't continue to carry those funds over uh, in this particular time. But uh, as far as, you know, uh, appealing to the athletic directors to please do something with the North Carolina High School Athletic Association is critical. I think Mr. Howell is absolutely correct on that, and I think it's in your hands as high school principals to do that. The other thing that I want to uh, get affirmation tonight about was something that I asked about and Mr. Armstrong assured me that our school system, if we have athletics, and obviously we're having athletics uh, because they have started practice, that we are following the North Carolina High School Athletic Association guidelines and the guidelines from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Would you please state if that is correct uh, once again, please, Mr. Armstrong? Yes, Mr. Kennington, uh, just last week we've had area Zoom meetings for ADs. They broke down uh, every school system in the state. And so uh, we were part of a meeting on Friday. And the entire meeting, uh, the only purpose of that meeting was all the safety protocols that are in place. That was the entire meeting. And I can send that link to you all. It's good that you, you can look at it until Sunday as board members to see everything that we've covered. But they're holding uh, every school system responsible for those protocols, and we've already um, we've got those in place already. And I'm, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but mm -hmm. I, I want to put you on the spot. That's again, fine. If you don't yes, mind. Sir. I don't mind. Uh, and I, I would like a yes or no answer. Are the Iredell Stakes School System schools following the North Carolina High School Athletic Association rules Number one, the Department of Public Instruction rules for our middle schools, number two, and the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services guidelines, number three. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, I totally agree. I think this board's either, it, it, it keeps coming up. We need to, the board needs to say, are we going to play sports or not? Uh, you you know, we normally play sports every year as part, as part of what, what school systems do. So as chairman, I think we must tonight tell our people we're going to play sports or we're not going to play sports. So I, I totally agree with that. Uh, and I, I think that should be done with middle school and, and high school if, uh, if, if the board desires. Well, I agree, and I, I, and I won't belabor the point. We started sports. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to cut them off, you better do it tonight, as far as I'm concerned. I totally agree with that, and I would ask this board to consider that, because if you don't do it tonight, then I think we're by omission saying we're going to have sports, and that means that we'll have to pay for whatever it costs to have sports. Well, I personally think we'll probably pay less this year than in most years, simply because of the short, short season. And I'm not sure that uh, – We'll end up being the one stopping it. We, we got to see where this is going. But uh, anyway, uh, if we want to, I, I think the board's going to have to do that. We've we've uh, come to an impasse. Are we going to do it or are we not? I think everybody needs to make that decision and, and understand the ramifications of that decision. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion right now then, if it's in order that uh, the Iredell Stakeville Schools Board of Education uh, approves the uh, Guidelines from the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, the Department of Public Instruction, and the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, and that we will follow their guidelines and offer uh, sports programs for the 
2020-21 school year following these guidelines. I'll second your motion, Mr. Kennington. Okay, we've got a motion to support the North Carolina High School Athletic Association DPI and the uh, Department of Health and Human Services guidelines and continue to offer sports in our middle school and high schools under their rules and regulations. Uh, other discussion on that? Does this mean then that we're saying we're going to sponsor the sports? We're going to have sports. We're going to have sports, yeah. right? That's what this motion is. We're going to have sports. So, but we don't know what it's going to cost. Nope. That's true. So, I mean, that's what we're doing. We don't even know if we're going to be able to play or not. I know that. So, as much we don't as know whether or not we're going to play, 000. and we don't know how much it's going to cost. So, it's like a pig and a what is it? But. Well, we know we know we have an estimate of what it's going to cost. We know what it's cost us in the past. Uh, yeah. It's not like we've not been paying for sports. Okay. Sports have been costing I us just, money every year. I just don't have that in front of me. Except and I didn't put it as a part of my motion, uh, Mr. Kelly, and I, I agree that uh, the figure is unknown, but I do expect the schools to exhaust their athletic funds uh, you know, for the, the for the money, and we'll just have to see what what falls. Chairman mm. Page, we've got a excuse me, Mr. Chairman. We got a we have thing on. We do have an obligation. Like I said last year, we got to feed. We got to get these children to school. They got to get back in school. Um, they got to be transportation. We got to feed them. But these children, a lot of them are there definitely for their education. But if them some of these children don't have athletics and event and a way to get out. We're going to lose everything we've got. Our kids are not going to come back. We've got to. And so we've got to, a child has to go to school to learn, but he also has to have food. He has to have athletics. He has to be everything he needs there to be well-rounded. If you take their athletics away from them, that's just going to ruin everything. We need to try it. Let's go. Let's get back to school, make some right decisions. And, and I'm told, and I'll be – my last meeting, I'll be told wrong about this, but we don't turn all our attention back to God and get him back in our schools and do what's right, then we're going to all be in trouble. So if I'm chastised for that, attorney, whatever, I'm telling you what's going. We've got to move these kids. We've got to stand behind them. This is a great board here. I'm sorry I'm going to be gone from you guys, but that's what we've got to do. We've got to turn our eyes back to God, turn it back to these administrators, and give them our support. Open the schools, play ball, let's feed the kids, let's go to class, let's let me teach them how to all to read. I'm telling you, we got to do it together, and we can't stop. That's my statement. Call. Mr. Chairman Page, if you look at the screen, typical year about $1.1 million, but now this is without proceeds that the uh, schools take in. Right. So the schools, and I've said this, and I said it on the radio show, without the Boosters Club, we could not do sports because it, it, it's $1,000 to outfit a football player. With again, without boosters clubs, so there was a misnomer that we make a ton of money on sports, and we could use that to give teacher raises. Uh, we do not make money on sports. So this year, you're looking at about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars projected without any of the gate proceeds coming in. But of course, if they're going to hold us to twenty-five indoors and a hundred outside, which I'm still, I mean, I'm with Mr. Howell there. I haven't figured that one out at least the high school association could waive the fees for officials and pay for it out of their reserves, which is north of $26 million, and I, they also have a general fund. So it's quite hefty also. So, yes, I would concede that they need to step up, and I actually have been in contact with several legislators today, uh, pushing that up towards Raleigh because we need some help from that reserve fund for the officials. If we could get the officials out of the way, some of our uh, teachers and staff that currently also do gate duty would help out with some of these games. But again, um, yeah, I can concede uh, we, we have to go on as life as usual and try to get our kids back in school. But um, just that's the figure. I would say before we vote, there's, there is some good that's going to come out of this. Is because you now see students that have been online not come back to school yet all of a sudden we're offering sports they come back to play sports you got it and so that is nothing but positive if you ask me it's a move in the right direction yep. and it, you know we got to keep pushing the wagon all right any other comments on the motion the motion is that uh, we commit to play sports following all the state guidelines for the 2021 school year. Uh, any other discussion? 
All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Carried unanimously. I do have a, a motion now. I would like to send a letter from this Board of Education to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association talking about our displeasure with their schedule and how, well, I'll let the, I'll let the lawyers write it. I would say <laughs> all they did was check boxes like they had a, a spreadsheet. Mm. And I disagree with the way they've done it. And I understand because we don't know. And come second semester, the governor's liable to say everybody's going back to school. Amen. I hope so. And liable to say nobody's going back to school. That's exactly right. Mr. Howell, could I make a suggestion that it's in lieu of a motion uh, to for this board right now to write that is to let uh, the administration work with the uh, middle school and high school principals to come up with that. I think what I just heard from Dr. James was something that should definitely be in it, and that is to ask, you know, give them something concrete. Pay for the officials. Right. You know, pick out some other things. If Dr. James is in contact with legislators, let him work with them and let them come up with a, uh, a draft that they can present to us next month and do it. I don't think a month will make a difference no. on that, if that would be uh, agreeable with it, you. It is, so I withdraw my motion. And uh, if Dr. James would be willing to do that, uh, uh, I think it's a step in the right direction. I agree. And I do think Dr. James has hit something on the head is we need to talk to our legislators about this, this uh, situation. Uh, okay, that short athletic discussion of an hour, we, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, now we'll move into board member comments. I've got several. Anybody want to go first? The floor is yours, sir. All right, thanks, sir. Um, I started to mention this last month. We have, we've, we've enjoyed Carson's pickles, but in case y'all get a chance, his father has just written a book. Uh, the Tobacco Barn, it's under Tennessee Guns is his pseudonym, but it's uh, Pete Lester, it's uh, Carson's dad. So if y'all get a chance, he had a book signing. I bought one of his books. It's a very good book. So I just wanted to push him. He's one of our parents that supports Carson, and if you get a chance to do that. The uh, only second thing is I want to say, and I'll try to be brief, is, of course, tomorrow's, um, since we're out of school on Wednesday for Veterans Day, tomorrow, um, and Todd was over, but I, his wife is hosting at Third Creek Middle, at uh, 8.30, they're doing a veterans program at Third Creek Middle. And then from 10 to 11.30 at West Iowa High. Ms. Gaither, you want to say anything about your program tomorrow? They're going to drive through, and our band is going to play for the veterans. Our they're going to be outside. Be outside, that's what I understand. <laughs> we were hoping to drive through what wasn't inside. I was told, told Child Nutrition had drive through windows now. You told me that, <laughs> Tina. Didn't you tell me? <laughs> Okay, the only other thing is you see in the back of the room, we do have a clock on the left, but large grandfather clock, anything over six feet is a grandfather clock. That was in my parents' home when it burnt back in uh, 1970, and the uh, fireman got it out the front door, and um, my mother is 95 now, and she didn't want to do anything with it, so I've had it refurbished, took the burnt parts out of the back and donated it to the boardroom, and uh, there will be some pieces of glass put back in there, but the clock's over 50-some years old. It was handmade by my uncle, uh, Flake Hodson, and the sister clock, just like it, is in Virginia, in Chesapeake, at his son's house, so it's handmade. There are no machine parts on it, and uh, it was made. I donated it to the board member here, and I will we'll probably put my mother's name on it somewhere that uh, she wanted to give it to y'all but I uh, thought it would add a little charm to the to the boardroom and uh, like I said this will be my last board meeting and I don't have a long long dissertation to say uh, eight and a half years I've been on the board and before that I worked about 10 years with the school system and uh, I've been around Iowa County all my life and I um, was glad to serve with this board and um, uh, they're a good bunch of people and I could probably sit here and talk 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 and you'd probably rather say let's go to the bar and have a drink after the meeting or something like that but um, just want to tell you about a few things, and uh, I'm just glad to be here, and I will not be a stranger. Um, I still live in the area, still live in West Idol. Miss Gaither, I'll be there for my grandchildren's graduations, and maybe you can invite me as a guest so I can be on stage to maybe hand them their diplomas. But um, thank you, and this whole room is full of a lot of people. I've worked for most of them, Dr. Miller and uh, 
the ones in the back. Tim Ivey's daddy was a mentor at one time. Uh, still hope your dad's doing well. And uh, the rest of the folks I worked with, Larry and uh, Chicken Neck in the back. Some of you don't know who that is, but he's back there. And, uh, and Herman over at North Idol. So um, I graduated from North. My children went to South. My grandchildren, the last daughter's going to West. And my mother went to Senior High. So I'm not trying to leave Lake Norman out, but I've just never had any kids that way. I've never, I've never gone South of Troutman. So and I can't afford any land South of Troutman now. So uh, I'll be where I'm at for as long as I know. And anything you need, I still have every principal. And Tim can tell you, and, and Ms. Gaither, I have every principal in every school with my telephone. So I'm sure they will still call. And uh, I'll be here to do anything I can for anybody. So, um, and uh, thank you that we have one country and we have one flag. And no matter what this election thing wins, I just hope that God will look after everybody and it will go in the right direction. So I appreciate everything everyone here has done. And uh, I, can't, I could probably talk longer, but I'm getting hit under the table. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. I'll stop talking. Thank you for everything. And I've enjoyed my eight and a half years on the board. I didn't hit you under the table, and, but uh, I should. Uh, I just say thank you, not, not only what you've done for the board, but uh, just your personal friendship, uh, I think, means so much to, to everyone here, and, and we appreciate it. But I was sincere down here. Uh, look, Santa Claus is going to bring you some socks. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, another board member comments. Before I turn it over to Dr. James, uh, Dr. the same. I believe you want to make a comment tonight. Thank you, Chairman Page. I would like to say that uh, Dr. Lassane has tendered her resignation. She's going to be going to Durham Public Schools. And I do want to commend her for 20-plus years of working in the community with our students, staff, community members, and always trying to to help those that are less fortunate. And I think that's a passion of hers, and I think she has exemplified what all of us could do in life if we would uh, just put the effort into helping those, again, that are less fortunate. So I commend her for her work in Idle State School Schools and her work, most of all, helping children that are at risk accomplish more than they could possibly dream in life. And I know that's a passion of her, hers, and that's why she's in education, like many of us are. Um, and again, Veterans Day tomorrow, and I will tell you, my dad told me one time when he was a World War II veteran, when you're in that foxhole and bullets are coming at you, it doesn't matter uh, what color of the skin the person is beside of you or what diverse they are, you're all brothers and you're all looking after each other. And this country needs to get back to that. Um, I grew up not in abject poverty, but I know what poverty is, uh, and I have immense respect for helping children uh, get out of the throes of poverty, and I think that's the only way our country is going to move forward, that and a lot of other things. But abject poverty just has got its hand and grip on so many kids across our nation, and they need our help. They need someone to step out of their comfort zone and reach out a hand. So I do thank Mr. Murphy for speaking tonight. There's been a lot going on with COVID. I will say as a district, we're part of an ABC Science Collaborative. It's a consortium of immunologists across the country and the world that's collecting data. And I will say that uh, they have given us a pat on the back. We're one of the largest school systems that have been in school this long and continue to go successfully. There's many, many things that we have learned, and I'm sure the, the leadership team in here could tell you we've learned a lot about science that we probably didn't learn in school. But uh, I will say FODMIDE is my new word, FODMIDE transmission. So what that means is this virus does not uh, transmit itself through that uh, venue, which typically means you can't touch a surface and pick, pick it up. So no matter how poorly we may clean or how great we do clean, the, the transmission of COVID-19 typically comes through air. Um, so again, um, but that doesn't mean we want to let up on what we're doing. But I know that it makes people feel comfortable when we clean. I will say that we have a fraction of spread inside our schools among students. That in the community is much greater. So again, the immunologists are saying the safest place to be is within inside our schools. So um, I want to continue to assure parents that we're going to have COVID cases. Us as adults have to work on the six-foot distancing rule because, as also Mr. Murphy said, 
If you're in that six-foot bubble for more than 15 cumulative minutes in 48 hours, then you will be uh, quarantined. And that's what's going to prevent us from having school in operation being quarantined. So um, I will tell the community this. There's some misnomers here. There's a thing called HIPAA, which is much more strict than FERPA, which we all hear about. But if you go get a test, if uh, Attorney Cute gets a test and he's positive, the health department's going to be notified. Well, of course, if he's our employee, I'm not going to know. The only other person that's going to know is HR because he's going to be out 14 days. And it's, it's very strict on what we can or cannot say. So it's not like we can say we, we basically have been told to stay out of it with the exception of HR working with Mr. Cute if he's positive and then working with contact tracing to get those people that were around him, according to him, uh, quarantined. So it's not like we share a lot of information with the health department, and then, again, that falls under HIPAA. So we are doing the best we can under the circumstances to put out the information we can. We do. Uh, I know that uh, Dr. Nutting puts out each week the, number, week the number of cases, and we'll continue to work on that. Um, but I do want to say thank you to the staff. Uh, this is probably the most stressful situation I think you could put a school system under and a board and a community. And... Uh, like I said, one of the superintendents said, I found out that grace has a shelf life because people tend to forget really quick all the things you have done. I do want to say I commend child nutrition, hard decisions we've had to make. But again, uh, I think we're going to come up with a good plan with repurposing people. And in, in uh, closing tonight, I want to thank Dr. Lesane for her work in Idle Statesville School and most of all her work for closing the gap with at-risk students. And I wish you well. I think you'll do great. Dr. Lassane, the board, I'm sure I speak for the board and thank you for everything you've done for us. Uh, you, you're going to be hard to replace, and uh, we do thank you for everything uh, and wish you good luck in your new endeavors. Uh, Charles, I'm going to ask you. Uh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. I'm going to ask to uh, let Mr. Gallion adjourn us tonight. Hey, and I'll second it. That, that'll work. <laughs> Are you through with all your business? Any other board business to come before the board? I'll make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. I'll second. I have a motion, second to adjourn. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. And all opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Thank you. <laughs>